Hi, it's Matt here from Digital Matter. Uh, so this video is just to run through how our cellular edge devices obtain a position and, and the settings you need to be looking at to, to control this process. So uh, just a quick look at our devices and key features. Uh, you can check this out on our website for full details. Um, but what we're going to focus on in this video is the cloud-based uh, location solving. Um, so first off is the Yabby Edge, which uh, you might have seen us already talk about a lot. Uh, so it runs off three AAA batteries. We've got uh, cellular or LoRaWAN versions available. Uh, and it's really about the deploy once battery life on this device, as well as the uh, indoor outdoor location solving, which is extremely low powered and you can get a fix where other devices just won't, you know, like right in the middle of a warehouse or, or deep in a container stack where you know, visibility of satellites isn't available. So we've got the Wi-Fi and cell tower fallback. Okay, so what we've just released now is uh, it's bigger brother than the Oyster Edge. So it's a pretty similar product. It's got our AA batteries for a bit more grunt and extra battery life. Uh, but probably the key difference is the BLE 5.2 gateway. Uh, so this allows you to monitor basically anything uh, with additional Bluetooth tags. There's tags out there on the market for things like temperature sensing, uh, magnetic door open or close sensors for maybe cool trucks or things like that, uh, humidity sensors, uh, fuel or tank level sensors. Uh, you know, the list just goes on and on. Uh, you know, effectively, if you need to measure something, you'll find a sensor that can be made to work with the Oyster Edge. Uh, it'll either already work out of the box in many cases. Uh, or we can, uh, you can work with us and we can integrate it into the firmware. Uh, so, you know, we like to say here that the, the devil's in the detail uh, and there's a lot of complexity under the surface of, of what's going on in this slide. Uh, but just to use the devices, you don't really need to know every single detail uh, and every single in and out. Uh, it just helps for us to think about it in this way uh, for when we're configuring them, because uh, overall that is what's happening. Uh, so, and it's just worth thinking broadly in this way because there's settings that cover each of these steps one, two, and three. And you know, if we can identify any problems, we might be able to know where to start looking. Um, so basically, broadly, when the device needs to get a fix, it's decided for some reason uh, it needs to update its position. That might be we're just doing two heartbeats a day, or we've configured it, it, configured it to update if we start moving uh, or during movement. Uh, so basically these are just the settings we'd be looking for. We've got uh, detailed guides on our support page for all of this. Um, but basically the device would trigger a scan based on how we've set it up here. Uh, so either a regular heartbeat or due to movement. Uh, so on the left, we can see where we'd set up our update rate and if we want to uh, track periodically or based on movement. And then on the right, if we're using movement based tracking, this will control uh, how long uh, we need to, to sit still before the trip ends. Because uh, obviously you don't want to start and stop trips if you just stop for five seconds momentarily. Uh, so we just need to set a bit of a time there. Um, you'll actually see that on a lot of our parameters, such as over here, uh, you know, we've got a link to our support site uh, directly to an article specific for this. So if you ever get stuck when you're editing parameters, just look out for these for a bit more detail. Okay, getting a bit more advanced here, but uh, we can actually control what constitutes accelerometer movement. Uh, so typically we need about four seconds of, of sort of light shaking uh, to begin a trip. We can make that super sensitive uh, by disabling the wake filter. So any light touch will put us into a trip. Uh, or we can make it less sensitive by adjusting these parameters here. For example, if we wanted to, to require a bit more, we'd just double these. We could start with six and two and just progressively bump up if we want to filter out some of the smaller movements. 
uh, and we can even go really granular for specific applications uh, if we like. Um, so, you know, it kind of speaks to all our parameters. There's, there's a lot of configurability, uh, but you don't necessarily need to go and set each thing up. Uh, it's more just there if you want it for, for niche applications, you, you can get it done, uh, you know, and have your application up and running that day. Uh, you don't need to wait for any firmware changes. It's all there at your fingertips. Okay, so once we've decided uh, the device needs to update position, it's going to do a, a location scan. Uh, so this is controlled by our uh, geolocation parameters. Uh, so it's definitely best to start on defaults. It's going to work well for most. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have any specific requirements or issues, you can talk to us and we might be able to tweak them. Uh, so essentially what the device does is it will do a scan for about 10 to 15 seconds, uh, scanning for both satellites, which is the GNSS scan and Wi-Fi access points, which is basically Wi-Fi wi -Fi routers uh, in the area. And then it sends that all off to the server. Um, it definitely it makes the most sense most of the time to just let the device collect all the data and we can filter it on the location engine side to get the, the best and most accurate uh, location that's possible. Okay, so then once we uh, send the data, this raw data, off to the location engine, the location engine will attempt to do lookups in this order here. Uh, and it, so it'll try a GNSS lookup first. Uh, if it's successful, it will just use that. Uh, you know, and then if we couldn't get one, Wi-Fi and so on to sell. Uh, this is the order of sort of the most accurate to the least accurate. Uh, you know, if GNSS is available, we, we definitely want to be using that. It's, it's a little bit more accurate than Wi-Fi or cell. Um, yeah, so, and so moving on. Uh, so the typical accuracy of GNSS is 30 to 100 meters. Uh, we need at least six satellites for a fix. Uh, but it's, it's also important to note it's different to an onboard GPS, like maybe the Oyster 2 or the Oyster 3 that you're used to. It's, it's a quick, uh, low power scan uh, where it just, you know, it's only 10 to 15 seconds where it, it just grabs what it can see and passes it on. Uh, a device like the the Oyster 3 or the Yabby 3, if after 10 seconds it's only, it can only see two satellites, uh, the device itself knows, well, that's not enough to get a fix. I'm going to keep looking for, you know, up to, you know, a minute, 60, you know, longer if we configure it like that. So, you know, side by side, we might notice in marginal conditions, we might uh, not get the odd GNSS fix that we might get with another device. But it's just all about the sort of low power, which we're optimizing for and, and the low cost of the, uh, for the for the edge devices. So it's definitely horses for courses and it, it's just something to be aware of. But uh, you find we've been finding it works, you know, exceptionally well, uh, pretty much all the time. Uh, some critical things you need to look at to improve the G GNSS performance, uh, particularly on the Yabby Edge is uh, set the firmware to the latest uh, update and update the location module. Uh, so this is covered here. So all we need to do is set this firmware and apply this parameter. Um, so these are actually defaulted on the Oyster Edge. Um, and the reason being is essentially these are upgrades from, from Semtech on their LR1110 chip that we use, uh, and also on the server side. So uh, speaking of these, two scans here. The, the, the multi-scan is there's been an update where uh, on the actual module itself, which improves the, the scanning performance. So on board the device, uh, meaning that we're more likely to pick up a, the satellites, uh, pick up more satellites, you know, more easily. Uh, and actually what's quite interesting is the, the combo scan. So if we are uh, configured for movement-based tracking, uh, and we're not on the move, the device will, will know that if it's just sitting stationary for a couple of days. And what happens is it will just heartbeat regularly, maybe every 12 hours or, or six or whatever we've configured it for. 
and on the first scan it might see 10 satellites with various data on the next scan it might see a few more and what we can actually do is given we know we haven't actually moved we can uh, keep combining extra and extra data and just bring in the the location so we're going to get more accurate so it's um yeah it's quite interesting tech um, but what it really shows is the performance of this edge technology is is continuously improving uh, it's not fixed uh, there's updates that we're adding and there's updates that uh, a lot of the other third-party systems that uh, that we use to provide the service are bringing as well you know for example on the semtech side here okay so going to the wi-fi you get your typical accuracy here um, so you know the wi-fi is a little bit less accurate due to that you know the underlying technology and and ultimately it's um we resolve the wi-fi locations by sending the mac address data off to to various third-party databases um, like google and others uh, so we we actually give you the control to select which tier of lookups you like uh, so it's well worth giving the value tier a shot. So this one here, um, it's quite easy to set up. Uh, just one one uh, change on OEM. So basically, early on in our testing, we found probably the performance wasn't quite as good as the premium tier, but our recent testing has shown that that gap's really close significantly. So it's it's worth just giving it a shot to to save some costs, and you might notice very similar performance um, you know again it's showing you know other things can change in the background so like these other providers they're they're improving their databases every day at that improves the wi-fi position accuracy so you know here's just a couple of examples of of what can happen with the underlying wi-fi technology this is quite rare but uh, for example on the left here uh, this is actually me out on a boat uh, I was about here at one point and effectively I think I did a journey around like this when I was here for whatever reason the the GNSS position uh, failed at, at that instant it was on about two minute position so one of them failed uh, it managed to pick up a Wi-Fi router from over here because the signals travel very well over water um, and because it can see this access point it thinks we're over here uh, so it's bounced so maybe for an application like this I'd uh, disable the Wi-Fi um, just to avoid this kind of thing uh, you know on the on the right here uh, we're seeing the device is around here but what what we figured out in the data was actually picking up a, a mobile caravan with a with an access point which had been driving all around so when we send that data to to google they go okay well we've seen this device in this location before um, so you know their database is constantly moving and it's just perhaps not keeping up with with a router that you know is, is sort of moving around which is assumed to be stationary okay and then finally we come into the cell tower fix which you know the accuracy is a fair bit less probably between 200 and uh, two kilometers uh, it's generally more often down at the 200 meter range which is actually you know, it's quite uh, impressive for, for what it really is uh, so we only fall back to cell tower positions if we haven't had a GNSS or Wi-Fi position for for some time um, and the cell tower data we're using is detailed timing information and and multiple cells it, it's a lot more than just you know we're next to this tower over here in this region it's you know what are the neighboring ones and, and trying to get a, a bit of a better estimate um, but yeah we, we sort of uh, only use it as a fallback you know one example might be if you're updating position every three minutes when you're driving along the road in trip uh, if you just miss one of those positions you might not want to uh, you know automatically fall back and use a cell tower position you'd rather probably just fail the fix and just wait for the next one and it's going to probably be a bit more true to life uh, you know what your track looks like 
So we do check that you know the cell tower position is you know is is worth updating by. We haven't say, we've failed the other fixes for a little while, and we've moved significantly according to the data. Uh, so you know a few common pitfalls and, and queries are finding with these devices. Um, you know our device look, we found the the edge technology is you know it's absolutely fantastic, but there's a reason we have more than one device in our range in that uh, really it's it's a horses for courses situation and and these devices aren't going to cover every use case, but uh, we've got other devices that will. So you know one common question we might get is people are saying that the device is falling back to Wi-Fi and cell, you know even though it's outdoors. Um, so you know the things to look at there are reviewing the geolocation parameters uh, that we showed before. You know maybe we've configured it to only Wi-Fi by mistake or, or got something wrong that's making it not use GNSS. Uh, we we'll make sure we update the location module like we've shown. Um, but also you know again just understanding that it, it's doing a really low power scan, and you know it might be buried under a seat in a car or something which our other devices do very well to pick up, but it's just a little bit hard for uh, a device like, you know, and the yabby edge or the oyster edge. So we could think about maybe moving it a bit more out in the open and, and pointing it towards the sky and, and, and things like that. Uh, you know, one common thing is sometimes people see the Wi-Fi positions that maybe are, uh, you know, 50 to 100 metres away from the true location and say, well, that's not accurate enough for theft prevention. Uh, so you know that's a bit of an interesting question because we the device effectively you know tries everything it can to get a GNSS position, uh, which is very accurate, but it will fall back to a, a less accurate method when that fails to Wi-Fi or cell. Um, and really the question there is you know is that better or worse than no location at all? Uh, you know for example something might be stolen and get driven into an underground car park. And uh, if you were relying on GPS alone, you'd have no clue. Uh, whereas instead Wi-Fi might get you to, you know, 30 to 100 meters away, which isn't uh, exactly on the same, exactly in the same spot. Um, but, you know, maybe it's much better. Same with if you got loaded into a sea container, the, the cell tower is not very accurate, but, you know, maybe it's better than nothing. Um, yeah. So, you know, based on that as well, people sort of go, well, can I just use only GNSS? Uh, yes, you can set this up, but it's not uh, advised. Uh, you know, the lookup process and the location engine handles quite a lot. Now for the best GPS performance or GNSS performance, uh, the device needs a rough uh, position, which the location engine sends down to it based on the positions that it's solved. Uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of an interesting one. If you went into a car park for a couple of weeks uh, and didn't have Wi-Fi or cell tower fallback enabled, uh, basically what will happen is the device won't be able to get any form of position. Uh, and so the location engine can't send down this updated rough estimate for it to uh, best perform at getting a GNSS fix. You might go back outdoors and then again still have trouble. Um, so just use caution, you know, these sort of applications or edge cases, just speak to one of our support team and uh, we can help you out. Um, you know, and equally it can be argued if you're looking to disable Wi-Fi and, and cell tower fallback, uh, perhaps you're better suited to, you know, the application calls for an Oyster 3 or a Yabby 3, uh, you know, which are just starting to, to be produced now. We're starting to get uh, better stock. Okay, so you know the key benefits and applications of the edge technology with that in mind, you know, is obviously it's low cost. Uh, it's cost effective to track more assets and lower value assets. It's not just twenty thousand dollar excavators that need to be tracked anymore. It's you know it's starting to make sense to to track lower cost assets with lower cost devices. Uh, you know, it's a deploy once battery life. You know, the low power location solving method means we can put a device onto an asset uh, and it's going to last the life of the asset. You know, we can keep the cost and the effort of battery changes and downtime low. 
uh, and it's the indoor outdoor location performance you know for applications like freight and shipping containers pallets and, and medical equipment uh, you know so as we've touched on as well the yabby 3 and the oyster 3 are still in production where we need a device with an onboard gps so some of the benefits if you're using a device like this is speed and heading is available it's not on the edge devices uh, there aren't any lookup charges, uh, which are, are very low on the edge. They're really not, you know, of any consequence. If the pricing works out similar, but if you're really looking to pump through a lot of uploads, it might add up. Uh, you know, there's there's a direct integration option where we can send the data direct from the device to the the end server. Uh, some specific clients with you know security requirements uh, you know can't have any data travel off site to be resolved by by our um, location engine um, so that, you know that they might that might not be suitable for them to be to be using that service um, and you know the accuracy ultimately is a little bit better you know when you're outdoors with a device with onboard GPS yeah and so uh, to summarise, yeah, we've got you know a device, a battery powered device that can fit your needs, and you know these are some of the the exciting things and maybe some of the quirks that, that might not be obvious about the edge technology. Uh, and you can find more information on our website, and there's detailed guides and all the things I've discussed on our support page here.